Hello Autodesk people, my name is Jay Ayala of Autodesk and I'm a solutions engineer based out of Portland, Oregon and the video you're about to see is General Contractors Data Collaboration Series Part 2 using the Navisworks Export Utility. So this video is the continuation of our General Contractors Data Collaboration Series. Uh, if you were with us the, the previous video, this is video number two and what I want to do is I want to try to pick up from where I left off which was the Autodesk Navisworks NWC Export Utility, right? So once you've downloaded that file, which uh, which I have on my desktop here, um, you can go ahead and launch it. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to install a export utility. Um, as you can see here, this is the installer. There's a few things that I want to focus in on um, as far as the options are, are concerned. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these then. So once you install these products, it's going to ask you for one of two uh, uh, types of installations. Now I have a 64-bit computer, so I'm only going to install the 64-bit um, processes here. So I'll go ahead and uh, accept the agreement here, fill out my information, and now I want to configure this. So th some of these you're going to want to leave by default, but I do want to show you a couple things here. Now this is the exporter it's going to install. Navisworks Export Utility will automatically detect what software you have on your um, on your uh, hard drive and will start to fill this in for you. If you want to, you can check some of those boxes off, but go ahead and explore that and use the, the install button here to go ahead and proceed. So um, I remember installing this. This only took me like 30 seconds or so. I was trying to bring up my, um, my clock here so I could give you guys a timer, but uh, you know, it's only two pieces of software that it was installing on. Revit and AutoCAD MEP. So go ahead and show you here the, the timer. It didn't take me very long. I don't expect it would take too many users very long to install. Uh, so once you've got that installed here, let me shrink this icon here on my desktop. Once you've got that installed, you can go ahead and launch um, Revit. And I'm going to show you where to find the Navisworks export utility. Some people install this utility and don't know where to find it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my project here. Um, it's actually pretty easy to find. If you go to your add-ins uh, ribbon, there's a new ribbon that gets installed. It's it's called add-ins. Uh, if you go to your add-ins ribbon, there's a there's an external tool, um, external tools. You'll find the Navisworks 2011 export utility. Now at the bottom of this dialog box, I want to focus in on some of the settings that you can have for the export utility. So first thing that we want to look at here, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Um, first thing we want to look at this is the Revit file reader. Once you've got this selected, you can see all these um, check boxes. Now, in order to share the data, which this, this video series is all about the data, you're gonna wanna convert the element properties, make sure that's checked, and you're gonna wanna convert the element parameters. So make sure that you have that set to all. So, um, very important, you know, the parameters and the properties, that's where the data is stored. So you're gonna wanna send that information out to the Navisworks export utility. So go ahead and hit OK here, um, and then just give the file a name, and I'm going to place this on my desktop. So I'll go ahead and save this, and um, this file took about four and a half minutes for me to create, and as you can see, I've got my, my little timer thing going here. Uh, it took me about four and a half minutes to create, and um, the reason it takes so long is because we're, we're ripping out not just the graphical information, now we're ripping out all the data. Right, so, and um, there's actually been uh, quite a few projects that I've worked on, um, just for my own sake, where I've I've used this. And some projects vary from four and a half minutes. Some projects vary to twelve minutes, depending on how many, uh, how big the file is, and how many parameters you have. So here, I'm just going to open up my file inside of Navisworks, the one that I just created. I put on my desktop, and as you can see, I just want to focus in on a few things. I want to take a look at. Um, some of the objects here and take a look at this. So I'm going to zoom in and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my select tool. Oh, selection resolution. This is a really big deal. By default, Navisworks likes to have the selection resolution set to geometry. When you select an object, you don't see all the parameters, the data. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change that selection resolution to last object. Now when you pick it on a pipe or a duct or or anything, you're going to see all these different type of categories associated in the properties palette. Categories? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So all these tabs are different categories. Check out all these different tabs. We've got all these different categories. I'll just go through these 
really quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time, but the one specifically that you might want to focus in on is something like the element, right? So take a look at the element and uh, specifically go down to the size. Check this out. I got the pipe selected and it's telling me that it's got four inch diameter. It even has the diameter symbol here. What I really like about this particular property is if you click on a duct, you can see that it has 12 inch by 12 inch, exactly what you're expecting to see, right? So when you're dealing with pipe, it'll show you diameter. When you're dealing with duct, it'll show you the format that you're expecting to see. So now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about um, what's known as quick properties. So in your options editor, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at quick properties. And the, the way I leverage this is I'm gonna add a new element property. And what I want to do is I want to specify the category to be elements. And then I also want to specify the property uh, to be size. So if I just scroll down this list, I'll find size. And here's how you leverage this. Instead of having to pick on an object, all you do is hover your mouse over it and it'll tell you the element size. And I mean, there's no searching inside of the palette to find where that's at. Now here's an elbow. It shows you the format for an elbow, the inlet and the outlet. Here's, of course, a duct. And then check this out. This is a transition, a duct transition. It shows you um, the inlet and the outlet sizes. They're different, right? 18 by 12 by 14 by, 11, by 10. So that's what I really like about the, the quick properties and how you leverage that. All right, so let's, uh, let's get a bigger view here. Let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at some of this. Now I was thinking about the visualization aspect of all of this. So I gotta tell you guys, um, when you export an NWC or even an NWD file, the Navis, the Revit MEP objects, they're kind of they're going to come in as gray objects. And that's because of the rendering material. Um, that there's no rendering material assigned to them. Now when you look at a, an a Revit architecture file that was done for site, you can see the street and you can see the grass, the the the, the ground has different uh, rendering materials to it, so you can tell the differences. So when you look at Revit MEP, you see um, what we're using is, we're using display filters. And filters are not the same as rendering materials, so that's why we're seeing a lot of white. Now what I wanna see is I wanna see red for supply and blue for return inside of Navisworks, so how do I do that? Let me manage my, my desktop a little bit here. I've got some Navisworks file for my MEP, my architecture, and my civil. And of course, I've got a Navisworks log that gets created. So let me just tighten this up. I'll delete this file. Oh, and here's our DWF file that we made for the last video. All right, so uh, you need to know that Navisworks has a subscription benefit. Um, the subscription advantage pack has what's called an appearance profiler that will help us with the color coding. Now, in order to install the appearance profiler from this uh, subscription advantage pack, you have to have Navisworks subscription pack, uh, the Navisworks um, service pack, the service update number one, right? So I've already downloaded it. I've installed it onto my Navisworks. And assuming that you've done the same, um, you're going to want to close down all of your Autodesk software. This is just best practice for... Uh, Revit and for Navisworks, anytime you install a Nav uh, an Autodesk update, just close down your Autodesk software. So again, assuming that you've installed the service pack number one for Navisworks, you can now install the service pack, um, excuse me, the subscription advantage pack. Now, the subscription advantage pack has an appearance profiler that I've mentioned. It's an exclusive tool for our subscription customers. And this took me um, about five minutes, if I remember right, to uh, to go through the installation process. Maybe less than that. I think it was more like three and a half to four minutes. But um, what it's installing is this appearance profiler. And it's going to help us color code all that information. So stay tuned for the next video in the series to understand how to use and leverage that appearance profiler. On behalf of Autodesk, my name is Jay Ayala. And the video you just saw is... General Contractor Data Collaboration Series Part 2 using the Navisworks Export Utility.